Thank you, Jack. NatureServe is a biodiversity information network, part of the intelligent nervous system for conserving the diversity of life. In every state in the US, all the countries of Latin America, and every province in Canada, the NatureServe network produces essential information for species and ecosystems, where they are found, and the degree to which they are imperiled. For over 50 years, our information standards and our shared technology have connected the data and people of the NatureServe network. Today, using Microsoft Cloud Computing and Esri's modern tools, we are able to generate, analyze, and share biodiversity data at a pace and scale never before possible. Today, we are unveiling the first high-resolution view to where our nation's most imperiled species are found. We've produced detailed maps of the geographic distribution of over 2,000 species at risk. Plants and animals, vertebrates and invertebrates, both aquatic and terrestrial. We then stacked these maps to see what we've never seen before. We can identify the places that matter for sustaining our nation's biodiversity. Look just to the north of us in the area around Los Angeles. These brightest colors indicate where multiple threatened species still have remaining habitat in one of the most densely populated urban areas on the planet. Or over here to the southeastern US, an area that is experiencing explosive growth. But these bright colors indicate it's still filled with habitat for threatened species, not only on land, but also in the rivers. This map is not just a static data layer. It's an interactive map. We can ask, which species at risk? How many? Are they butterflies, crayfish, or salamanders? How imperiled are they? This map provides conservation intelligence for better, smarter decisions. But where does that intelligence come from? How can we say with certainty that the mountains near Santa Monica or the Gulf Coast of Florida are the keys to sustaining biodiversity and our natural heritage? Answering that question takes three things. An army of sensors, infrastructure to bring data together, and the best of data science to turn that information into knowledge. The army of sensors, that's NatureServe's network of botanists and zoologists, over a thousand strong. Through decades of fieldwork, we've been collecting data like this. These polygons represent documented occurrences of our nation's very most imperiled species. Behind these shapes, we maintain detailed information on the species they represent like the frosted flatwood salamander, which NatureServe has assessed to be globally imperiled, and which is listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. We know these data aren't perfect. They represent only where we've had opportunities to survey. And you can see on this map, there's some gaps. In parts of Nevada or down here in Alabama, are there no records there because there's no imperiled species? Or is it just because we haven't looked? That's where data science comes in. With Esri technology and support from Microsoft's AI for Earth program, we've built a spatial modeling infrastructure in the cloud that allows our scientists from New York to Arizona to work together. And together, we're filling in these blank places on the map. We're doing it by building predictive distribution models for thousands of species. Let me show you how, using a Jupyter Notebook. The map Healy shared combined data for many species, but we're going to start with just one, our flatwood salamander. This little guy is a great representative for all imperiled species. The first ingredient in better maps is our documented occurrence data, shown here in green for the salamander. We can then bring in predictors to characterize the environment, things like percent canopy, slope, temperature, and distance to water. And then one of my favorite parts, we can run open science tools like R together with ArcGIS Pro using machine learning algorithms like Random Forest to explore the relationship between the salamander and the environment. 
there's a bunch of simplified code. And then we could see which variables are most important for predicting habitat. We can run tests to see how well our models perform. And then, most importantly, we can generate new maps. Here, again, you see the salamander location data in green. But now underneath it, we have a probability surface showing where on the landscape conditions are most suitable for the species. And on top of that, here in yellow, we've delineated just those areas most likely to provide habitat. This becomes our new salamander map. The inputs and outputs are all documented here, making our science transparent and reproducible. We now have a prediction of salamander habitat. But how can we be sure that prediction's any good? The answer, again, is collaborative science. We've built this web application that allows the experts in our network and collaborating partners to view our results. And we hope someday soon to extend this application to engage citizen scientists like some of you. Our model reviewers can see the predicted habitat shown here in yellow and tell us how well they think the models do. They can enter geographically specific feedback and even bring in their own data to see how it compares. I'm going to drop in some points from one of our network programs, the Florida Natural Areas Inventory. When I do this, you'll immediately see that we haven't predicted any habitat down here where scientists in Florida have documented the species in the past. That information becomes part of a dynamic process, allowing us to continually refine maps. By tapping into human expertise and machine learning, we've built a process where the data for decision making becomes better and better. So how does the collaborative science that Regan described actually help balance the needs of society with our need to sustain the natural world. We'll explore the answer through our little salamander, although the story is very much the same for any of the species that we've modeled. Across the range of the salamander, we know change is coming. This is an analysis by Clark Labs that identifies natural areas that are vulnerable to development. Whether that pressure is from agriculture or infrastructure, housing or industry, our decisions will determine the impacts of that development. What places are so important we should avoid them altogether? How do we minimize the impacts that are inevitable? And where do we invest in restoration and mitigation? For most species at risk, the answer to those questions comes from coarse maps. For example, to fulfill their legal mandate to protect listed species like our salamander, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service starts with range maps, like this shown here in white, that delineate county boundaries where the species is thought to occur. But salamanders don't care about county boundaries, and that habitat doesn't exist everywhere within those counties. Coarse range maps limit the precision of our decisions, decisions that should be spatially explicit. Let's take a closer look. Within the orange areas that are vulnerable, there might be an engineer working on a road improvement project or an energy entrepreneur siting a new solar farm. They need to know if endangered species might be affected by their activities. But if the only data available are county boundaries, it appears that there's significant conflict. Time and resources are spent on regulatory burdens in areas where the salamander may not even exist. But with the fine-scale habitat map shown here in yellow, the potential conflicts can be reduced or even eliminated. Where salamanders and development do coincide, we can be smarter about planning. Field surveys can be more targeted, the siting of projects might be adjusted, and the most sensitive areas can be avoided. We've created these maps not just for the frosted flatwood salamander, but for all imperiled amphibians. For threatened freshwater species, such as mussels and crayfish. For pollinators at risk, such as butterflies. For the first time ever, we have a map of our nation's most imperiled plant species, over a thousand of them. 
Combining all these groups, this map provides high fidelity information to make smarter decisions, reduce conflict, and guide conservation actions. Using these data, we're working with the Nature Conservancy, a major supporter of this project, to determine the highest returns on our conservation investments. Our country has already invested, already set aside almost 10% of the lands and waters of the continental US as protected areas, designated for conservation and recreation. Now, we are able to ask which places have the most species at risk that fall outside those protected areas. Again, we can see what we've never seen before. The darkest red colors here show us where multiple threatened species occur entirely outside our conservation estate, that 10% that we've protected. Investments in these places can prevent extinctions. The map of biodiversity importance unveiled today is just the first view of a living map, one that will evolve as part of the intelligent nervous system for conservation. Enabled by technology, NatureServe is bringing together data and people to dynamically refine this map so we can better balance the needs of people and nature in a rapidly changing world. Thank you.